Today's topic, simple steps and strategies to master pharmacology. Today I'm going to emphasize a simple sequential strategy to help any student or new nurse master pharmacology and how to put the clinical picture together of pharmacology using five simple pharmacology questions that I've utilized in my own practice as a nurse as well as nurse educator. Once in nursing practice, you as a student are going to pass medications essentially every day. Therefore, it is essential that you as a student who will soon be a new nurse, has a deep understanding of pharmacology, but this is more easily said than done. For example, Davis Drug has over 1,200 pages and 5,000 medications that are present in this, in this resource. Nursing drug manuals have content areas that include for every drug, the indications, mechanism of action, farm class, time action profile, contraindications, side effects, interactions, route and dosages, nursing implications, and patient education. If you have medications to pass, and there are many of them in practice for even one patient, what content areas of the drug manual are the need to know and most important? My choice by far, the mechanism of action. Let me tell you why. Anatomy and physiology is a prerequisite that is taught in nursing programs, usually before they come into the program, but it's not taught with contextualization to nursing practice. Therefore, it's ta taught abstractly in concepts like ACE inhibitors, angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, renin, aldosterone, beta 1, beta 2, have no real hook to clinical practice. And therefore, students struggle taking abstract, decontextualized content from A and P and applying it to pharmacology unless you as a nurse educator are doing that and guiding them, which you also must take advantage of every opportunity to do so. So for example, I really got a sense when I was a brand new clinical educator, I would ask, and I still continue to do this, I was, uh, I asked my students, okay, here's a tenolol, and they would say, well, what is this medication? And they'd say, it's a beta blocker. And I would say, that's right, that's good, that's only the farm classification, tell me more, give me the, the essence of the mechanism of action. And I simply said, what is a beta blocker blocking? And they looked at me, many of them with kind of a, they didn't know, they weren't sure, but I was able to draw it out of them talking about beta-1, beta-2 receptors, sympathetic versus parasympathetic, and we were able, within a minute or two, able to draw it out of them. But the bottom line is, it's not enough just to know the farm class. And therefore, we as nurse educators must have a high bar of expecting our students to state in their own words, not merely parrot the mechanism of action. But in addition to a deep understanding of the mechanism of action and that it is understood, there's five questions and two clinical relationships I'm gonna share with you today that will help any student or nurse educator present pharmacology in a way that will prepare students for real world practice. So let's go to our first question. Number one, let's use, for example, our uh, example of a tenolol. 50 milligrams. Number one, what's the farm class? What is it for? Well, we know that atenolol is a beta blocker and it's also used for hypertension, angina, and in maintenance for souls, those who have had an acute myocardial infarction. So if a student was able to give me that information, we were good. Secondly, why is your patient receiving it? Now, many medications have more than one indication. So recognizing that you as a, as a student or the nurse must be able to look at your patient's history and their story and make a determination as far as which of these multiple reasons, like with an atenolol, it could be for heart failure, could be for high blood pressure, could be for MI, after an MI to decrease complications. Which one is it? So therefore, why is your patient receiving it? Obviously, must be known and understood. That's our second farm question. Number three, what is the expected response 
based on the mechanism of action. This is when a student or new nurse has that deep understanding of the mechanism of action. They'll be able to make the connection between looking at that mechanism and how it's going to impact the body. So when a student knows that a, a tenolol is not just a beta blocker, but that it's blocking beta or sympathetic nervous system stimulation on the heart, it's going to then have the opposite effect of lowering heart rate, lowering blood pressure. That's the level of knowledge I wanted my students to have and that I held my own self to as a standard, as a practicing nurse. Number four, what nursing assessments do you need to know before you administer and what do you need to know for assessments to follow up with? This is the power of understanding the mechanism of action for when a student or nurse has this deep knowledge of the mechanism of action they'll be able to situate that knowledge to practice. And they won't need Davis drug to tell them that they need to check the heart rate and blood pressure before they administer because they know how it's going to impact physiologically the body. Number five, is this a safe dose? And is the dose range low, mid, or high? Now again, identifying a safe dose is a standard for every student and nurse in practice. And this is a standard that I held my fundamental or first year students to, is just knowing it, is it safe? But let's build on that with a second year or advanced student with is the dose range low, mid, or high? Question is, why is that important? Well, critical and clinical thinking are essential. And when the nurse knows the dose range is 25 to 100 milligrams, and my patient, let's say, is just on a kiss of a tenolol, 25 milligrams, you can make a clinical judgment as you look at the big picture of your patient that the, let's say, the hypertension that my patient's being treated for is basically mild. If they're on 100 milligrams every day, you can make a judgment that whatever we're treating is much more severe or resistant and it's just gonna help add another layer of needed critical thinking that the nurse is going to have that's just gonna come intuitively with having this knowledge. Let's look briefly at two pharmacologic relationships. Again, when we look at clinical care, it's like a puzzle that you're putting together and each puzzle piece has a fit. So therefore, when you see these relationships, the student can put the clinical puzzle together and the fit becomes apparent. First relationship. What is the clinical relationship between the mechanism of action and the assessments required to be safe to administer? We kind of alluded to this earlier, but in essence, when the student knows that mechanism of action, in their own words, the assessments and follow-up become very obvious and apparent. Therefore, that relationship of of, of, of MEC to assessments becomes evident. The second relationship between the dosage of the medication and is the dose range low, mid, or high? I kind of shared that already here with the fifth question in, a, in this video, but in essence, that's going to strengthen that deeper level of critical thinking by recognizing your ranges especially for the most commonly administered medications in clinical practice in your clinical setting, that is going to strengthen the critical thinking of every student. And I just wanted to share and let you know that this resource, information is also in writing. I've written a book, Think Like a Nurse, Practical Preparation for Professional Practice. That is really my heart as a nurse educator and a nurse in practice for over 30 years to really kind of mentor and guide the next generation to really what's that need to know most important. It's supported by over 200 references from the literature, including Patricia Benner, Christine Tanner, and others. And this chapter content, chapter five, farm content you need to know and master is from that book. And uh, it's there for you, and it's a resource that I encourage you to check out. But in closing, nursing education is in need of radical transformation. And one simple step that every educator can do is to decrease content saturation and emphasizing what is really most important to clinical practice. I believe that understanding the mechanism of action 
is one of those foundational pieces that's a need to know from Davis Strug that's gonna help strengthen the learning of our students. So by emphasizing not just rote memorization of the mechanism of action, but deeply understanding it, your students will not only be well prepared to pass the NCLEX, but more importantly, they'll be well prepared for real world clinical practice. Thank you.